Psalms 107, verse number 20. It, it's, a, it's a simple scripture, which reads, He sent. Okay, so, um, you will need to bear with me. I have a limitation, and the limitation I have is that your ringtone will cut the flow of my anointing. Will cut it off. So if we have that, that kind of uh, unexpected display for the second time, I would, I would take my seat in the congregation. Spiritual things survive on a protocol. And that's why not everybody is spiritual. There is a regiment, there is a discipline that provides an atmosphere for spiritual things to rest. Spirit dimensions are trapped down by a culture a culture that is prescribed by the spirit that needs to be manifested. You will need to align with his culture. You will need to sustain the prescription of his regiment in such a way that affords him the liberty to manifest himself. All right? Um, we all have different types of spiritual capital on our lives and by spiritual capital I just mean anointing now like I said my time today is not God's will for me to preach today we will turn over the mic to the people that prefer the phone to my voice maybe tomorrow we can continue may the Lord bless us all in Jesus name Over you, let this peace that surpasses you, man, understanding be your portion. See you tomorrow. So I want to ask you to do tonight actually three options that I want you to choose from tonight. Number one, take out your phones. Take out your phone if you can. Please switch it off. If you don't want to switch it off, put it on silence. And in case you don't want to switch it off or put it on silence, please, you're free to leave. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So you either switch it off, you put it on silence, and if it's a burden, please, you're free to leave. Hallelujah. If I tell you the number of hours I prayed yesterday, you will not believe. You think I'm lying. Well, even after those number of hours, I couldn't preach. Because my master was dishonored. You can't do that in a mox. You can't do it in a mox. You can't do that in a shrine where Satan's name is revered. But you know, everything goes in the house. Not where I am. I will, I will go. I will leave you. I, I revere him. Because I will not be alive today if he did not choose. I'm not talking about spiritual life. Physically, I would not be alive today if he did not choose by an act of his will. This one should live. So I chose to worship him intimately. And I would defend his name to the day I die. So when I see people that don't, I walk away. You don't even understand. No need to explain to you. <laughs> Many of you don't know what that means. Come with me to the book of Psalms 107, beginning from verse 20. Psalms 107. Psalms 107. There's someone in this congregation, you have an eye defect. You've been using glasses for about six to seven years. But right now, the glasses that you are using is no longer helping your sight. Your eyes are dying. Your eyes are going to be healed this night. No. Now, I don't need you to say amen. When you listen to CNN and Fox News, you don't say amen. What I'm doing is that I'm casting news. And even if you don't believe it, it will come to pass. So I don't need you to support it with amen. I'm just casting news. This is what God is saying. This is what I perceive. So these eyes are dying. And the Lord says that he's going to heal the eyes. 
And when he heals the eyes, the reason for which he's healing the eyes is not because there is a need for healing. The reason why he's going to heal the eyes is because that is the only way the preacher can know the individual. Because God has sent the preacher to that individual. And the sign he gave the preacher is that he will heal the eyes. After the preacher identifies the individual whose eyes will be healed, then the Lord will do to the individual what he wants to do. Because what he wants to do to the individual is that he wants to open the individual's spiritual eyes. But the way the preacher will know this individual is that he will first heal his physical eyes. Psalms 107, verse number 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now, it's needful for us to understand that the concept of the use of words from the perspective of God is different from the use of words as far as humankind is concerned. The first time in the Bible that words were used they were not used as instruments of communication, they were used as instruments of creation. They were vehicles through which the authority of God was made manifest. And you, you will re remember that most of creation was an act of God's authority that was expressed through his word. And I use the word most because when it came to the creation of man, he did not speak man into being. Man is in another category of beings. This category of beings are made into being, not spoken into being. And there are angels like that that were not spoken into being, they were made into being. And these classes of entities that were made into being were equipped with a facility that makes them very complex. And that facility is the wheel. Every such creature, either angelic or human, that God made into being, that God did not speak into being, he equipped that high-class creature with a facility called a will. Are you there? Do you realize, therefore, the reason why Adam's dealings in the Garden of Eden was around Trees. Trees. Just trees. The reason why his dealings was around trees was because he will have to exercise his will to determine his lines of development. When you hear that angels fell, are you with me? In the story of how angels fell in Isaiah's prophetic presentation, in the book of Isaiah chapter 12, chapter 14, verse 12 to, to 14, you will find that the reason for the fall of angels was the exercise of the will. You are not with me? Okay. All right. Are you there? So in a 24-hour day, you make so many choices. And you think that what you are, the choices you are making are either good choices or bad choices. You are not deep enough. It's not about good or bad. It's actually about life or death. And anytime you exercise your will to make a choice, what you are choosing is either death or life. What will determine your means of development will always be occasioned by what you choose. Because we are in a category of creation that were made to be, we were not spoken into existence. So you will be involved in determining your lines of development. When you give your, we all give our life to Christ. But your spiritual level today is a function of the use of your will. 
So to be rooted in Christ is not a supernatural thing. To be rooted in Christ is to make a choice to choose life. And there are seven principles that you must embrace if you want to grow in life. 